Kurt Schilling has thrown 3,271 pitches this season. That's fourth in the majors. Top of the first, facing Mark Kotze. Kotze fouls it off. Schilling with five more pitches thrown. Now third in the majors. Next batter, Ryan Klesko, swings and misses at some heat. Next pitch, more heat. Another swing and a miss. And then another swing and a miss at a fastball. Quick at bat for Ryan. Bottom one, Steve Finley, facing Jake Peavy. Finley has deep thoughts. Mark Kotze attempts to but can't make the catch at the wall. Number 22 in the home run department for Finley. What happened to Mark Kotze? Well, out of his glove and over the wall, and Mark knows he could have had it. Anyway, Schilling facing Corey Dahan. Schilling moving up more. 27 pitches, passing Barry Zito for third in the majors. Schilling facing Mark Kotze. Kotze, uh, I don't think so. Next batter, it's that Klesko guy again. Remember, he struck out very quickly. Not this time. For the love of elevation, number 28 on the year. I mean, that pitch was very off speed. I mean, 83 miles per hour stuff, and Klesko crushed it. Next batter, Phil Nevin for Schilling. And Nevin, high heat, bottom five, still 2-1 Diamondbacks. Man on for Luis Gonzalez. Responding to a good visual, Gonzalez is first homer since August 23rd, number 26 on the year. It's a 4-1 game, just like that. After a walk, Jerry Fikach on the pitch, Matt Williams stroking. Number seven on the year, 6-1 now, Arizona. Top seven, same score, Schilling facing Nevin. Nevin strikes out. Next batter, Sean Burrows and Schilling. When this game was over, second in the majors and pitches thrown this year. First pitcher, by the way, with 45 victories in two straight seasons. That hasn't happened since Jim Palmer pulled it off in 75 and 76. Kurt likes the stat. Schmidt. Taking on the bums, top first, Paul Duca. Pops is following JT Snow. He's working those uneven parallel bars, even though there's just one of them. It's a nice catch. He's flexible. Then you got Kevin Brown making his first start since May 26. KB, since coming off the DL, does have seven relief appearances. He's going against Rich Aurelia. This is a rare matchup of former drillers. Aurelia, seven hits and seven at bats against him, and then lays one down. Adrian Beltre can handle it, so it's eight. Next batter, Jeff Kent, walks in a full count, and that brings up Barry Bonds. Bonds, ball high. He doesn't have to look at another one. He'll take that one, thanks. Bonds, one for three. Now, 74 plate appearances without a strikeout. Came in and hit 235 in his career against Brownie, but gets two bases here, and the Giants have a 2 nothing lead. Meanwhile, Schmidt, Benito Santiago. Santiago against Beltre gives him the high target, then drops it down low, and then Beltre doesn't know what's happening. He just misses and says, I'm done. I'm, I'm going away. Next batter, Brian Jordan, one-two count, fouls it away. Next pitch, Schmidt inside, gets three Ks for Schmidt through two. Bottom two, are really trying to extend that hitting streak against Brown. And on second and third, little chopper Alex Cora, going to go home with it. So we've got a fielder's choice for Man Aurelia. Meanwhile, Ed Montague calls Schmidt, save it home. Look at him, he steps into the Duca's glove. He got himself out. Poor Eddie blew this one. He can't be anymore out in that. Paul Tracy disgusted Aurelia. We said he's on first. Three nothing Giants. Benito Santiago against KB and he unloads. 15th of the season, number 199 of his career. Catching up to Bonds slowly. Five nothing Giants. Top seven. Schmidt. Kenny Lofton going back, going back, but Sean Green has just hit his 41st. Not 491 feet, but still long enough. 5-1. Dave Roberts now 0 for 8 in the series. Schmidt shuts him down. Later in the eighth, Green going to get another shot. This time against Scott Ayer. And Green trying to bring his team back. They're down 5-2. Air ball. 5-2 is your final. Giants take a one-game lead in the wild card race. Brown lasts just five innings, allows five runs on six hits and two walks. He's just 2-4 and four with an ERA of 4.56 and 10 starts this year. Plus, Brown's got an ERA of 5.65 and seven relief outings. The off-injured ace has won just 26 games over the last three years. LA, a lot of money tied up in that arm and not a lot of payoff, and now the playoffs in jeopardy. John, continuing with our showcase, A's and Angels, Ted Lilly making his first start since July 21st, going against Ramon Ortiz. Remember this, August 5th, 2001, another Lilly against Ortiz matchup. Lilly with the Yanks, and Ramon Ortiz hits Derek Jeter on the wrist. So, Lilly comes back as a Yankee, retaliates and hits Scott Spezio in the head. Spezio vows for revenge. Lily got tossed in this one. Let's flash forward to Tuesday. Lily facing Spezio again. Scoreless game, not anymore. Spezio got, gets his revenge, hitting 326 against the A's this year. Number 10 for Spezio. 
2 0 Angels. Lily getting roughed up early and often. Bottom three, same score. Spezio at first. Sean Wooten. Two for three, hitting 295. Down the line, this goes. David Justice with his head down, having all sorts of trouble with it in the corner. No error on the play, though. Spezio is waved around. Play at the plate. Safe. Scores from first, Wooten gets the third, 3 0 Anaheim. That would be it for Mr. Lilly. Two and a third, five hits, three runs. Top of the st six, still 3 0, a man on for Terrence Long. Second homer in as many days, number 15 for Long, and all of a sudden it's a 3 2 ball game. Still top of the six, same score, two on, two outs. Ortiz 0 4 lifetime against Oakland, still on the mound facing David Justice. Strikes him out. For Ortiz, just two runs allowed, two hits over six innings. Mike Sosha says, way to go, Ramon. Bottom seven, Angels with the bags juiced, as you see. Chad Bradford pitching, facing Benji Molina. Molina, 0 for 4. Miguel Tejada, that was easy. A's get out of the jam. Top of the eighth, A's with another scoring chance. Runners at first and second. David Justice again off a of Troy Percival. Darren Erstad, he won't drop this. Justice 0 for 3. He's hitting 275. It's still 3 2. Bottom eight runner at second. Spezio up again. Looking for space, but Terrence Long is all over it, but can't make the catch. He's over it, but he can't make the catch. Adam Kennedy would score. Angels beat Oakland. 5 to 2. The Angels win for the 11th time in 12 games. They're back to within two games of Oakland in the AL West. Ramon Ortiz has won three straight starts, posting a 1.23 ERA. Monday with homers 52 and 53. First, though, let's go the other way. Kenny Rogers, Edgar Martinez, and A-Rod in the outfield. And, well, there's a couple guys on. He drops that. Not going to be an error because they'll get a force on Boone. It's a fielder's choice, but a rough start. Bottom one still scoreless. Joel Pinero to Mike Young. 92 mile an hour gas. Next bat, Todd Hollinsworth. Have a swing. Full strike. And then A Rod comes up. And A Rod, slider on the corner, sit down. MVP Rod goes 0 for 3. Top two, two on. Ichiro Suzuki lays down the bunt. Kenny Rogers, cat like quick, throws the third. Not so well, really, though. Dan Wilson will score. It's 1 0 in favor of the visiting team. Caught up at 1 in the bottom of the fourth, though. Rangers coming back. Pudge Rodriguez shoots from down the right field line. Each row's over to get it. Todd Hollinsworth scores the go-ahead run. And then Pudge, for some reason, decides he wants to go to third, and then he decides he shouldn't go to third, and, well, he can't really get to second. He's just going to give up. Take a look at it again. Booney bobbles it there, but he's just, that's all right. Presence of mind. Go ahead, cut him down. Texas, ahead 2-1, but Pudge, me. Top seven. Mariners trail 2-1. Each row. Carlos Skian, base hit to center. Oh, we got a little rally built. Brett Boone with two on. Rudy Cienes in relief, in trouble. A little bit high. Advances the runners. Boone, still at bat, and he got two ducks waiting to come home, and no. Doesn't get the bat off his shield. Tried to go to first, don't show up the on. Next batter, Edgar Martinez. Grounds to second. Itro will score, and the Mariners tied up 2-2. Top nine, the Rangers lead 3-2. Francisco Cordero, and he's closing. Strikes out each row. Strikes out Carlos Key. And then Brett Boone, a K for you as well. That is closing them down. Texas wins it 3-2. Panero Red Sox, Devil Rays. Manny Ramirez involved in some controversy Monday, not running out of ground ball in the third inning, and Grady Little is manager. Well, Skip's not happy about it on Tuesday still. That's unforgivable. What 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 took place on the field last night, and and it's a reflection on not only our ball club and our organization, but it's a reflection on the on every major league baseball player. And after sleeping on it or not sleeping on it all night long and thinking about it all day, Grady Little made a mistake last night by not just taking him out of the game on the spot, and and it's a mistake I'll never make again. No, but he did let him play on Tuesday. It's bad for the kids, too, who are watching. And well, again, Manny, this time he won't have to run very fast. Hit a home run off Joe Kennedy with two outs. It's 28th of the year, and he's not exactly in a hurry. Top 6, 2-1 Sox. Ramirez facing Kennedy. And this time he's going to have to hump it a little. That's in the gap. 
Vermeer is a double. Look at Nomar. Always giving effort. Now that's what the kids want to see. Run fast. 3 1 Red Sox. Wednesday starter, Pedro Martinez. Keep, look at Pedro. Always ready to go. If he doesn't have his shorts jacked up under his armpits, he's wearing catchers. Awesome. Here. Bottom six, seven, one Sox. Nomar and Stephen Kent. There's your Superman, 22nd of the year, 9 1 Sox. Garcia, 3 for 4, 2 runs, 2 RBI. Oh Derek Lowe hit Felix Escalona twice, was ejected on Monday. So Tuesday, Lee Gardner pitching to Lou Marloni, and he got it. Immediately ejected by Jerry Croft. Hal McCray argues Red Sox crush the D race 12. When these teams hit each other constantly, they never play nice. Yanks' magic number is 12. They're hosting the Orioles. Someone forgot to tell the fans. Less than 9,000 showed up at Yankee Stadium for the first of a day nighter. Andy Pettit, Jerry Hairston, foul ball. Larry Vanover doesn't make any friends keeping the ball. So, what does a nice third base umpire do with a ball? He becomes a good guy. You see, he's going to get. See, giving it to a couple of youngsters, everybody's going to be happy, and there's nothing better in life than a hug from your kids. You remember that. Bottom seven, Willis Roberts is wild during warm-up. He hits the catcher, Geronimo Heal, on the wrist. Heal did stay in the game. Was this a sign of things to come from Roberts? Bottom eight, Yanks up 2-1. Look out, Jason Giambi. Roberts going ahead hunting. Next pitch, Giambi does get hit. Giambi not thrilled. Nothing to do with him going 0-2 in this game. He lets Roberts know it. Next batter, what happens? Bernie Williams. Wild pitch by Roberts. Jeter goes to third, Giambi to second. Then what will happen on the very next pitch? Are you kidding me? Wild again. Cheater would score. Roberts out of control. Yanks up three to one. Giambi will come out of this game for pinch runner Drew Henson. You better believe it. Tom Brady's roommate at Michigan. Well, Michigan could use the guy against Notre Dame Saturday. Anyway, Robin Ventura facing Yorkus Perez. Perez wild. Yanks win. Andy Pettit wins his tenth. And then take a look at the Yanks lineup for game two, a batting order you probably will not see come playoff time. Enrique Wilson, Alex Arias, that's your one-two hitters. Rondell White, career low, 236 batting average. Plug him in the three hole. First time as a Yankee for him. Soriano, Giambi, Jeter, Bernie, among those not in the lineup. I, I don't know how Danny Almonte didn't get in this game, but here they come. Your New York Yankees. If you add it all up, that's 158 combined home runs on the bench. But look, they're in the top step. They're very interested in what happens. We're tied at one of the four. Sidney Ponson, fat one to Raul Mondesi. 2-1 New York, Mondesi's 26th. Now to the Yanks pitching staff. They go into game two without having allowed a lot of walk in 49 consecutive innings. We'll go back to the third a little bit. We can do that. we got a time machine. Jeff Weaver getting the start. Full count. Weaver, Jeff Conai. Ron Coomer will handle that. That's three outs. Chain side, boys. 52 consecutive innings now for the Yanks. Top six, three one count to Tony Batista. One pitch away from sending him down to first all free like, and Alex Arias will handle that in short. Nick Johnson on the other end of it. 55 consecutive innings without a base on balls. Top seven, Weaver. Full count to Marty Cordova. In Cordova. The payoff pitch coming. That's what the play-by-play -play guys say. He whipped. 56 consecutive innings. To the top of the eighth. Weaver again goes 3-2. Luis Lopez. Rookie Juan Rivera charges. Shoestring catch. Yankees pitching staff. 58 consecutive innings. The split squad Yankees win 3-1. Cardinals beer makers. A lot of fun here. Matt Morris back first starts since August 23rd. First Richie Saxon, first pitch of the game is a strike. Saxon swings and misses with the second pitch. And Matt Morris apparently doing pretty well. Strikes out Saxon on three pitches. Bottom third, cars down one nothing. Jeffrey Hammonds, Morris will field that himself. Morris, five innings pitch, five hits, one earned run. That's swell. Bottom six, cars up 6-1. Rick White facing Matt Stairs. Stairs ground in third. Rick White. Five and a third innings pitch, zero earned run in September. The bullpen for the Cards without Jason Isringhausen has been fantastic. Keith Gittner doubles to center. Eric Young will score here. That's off Luther Hackman. It is the first earned run given up by the Cards bullpen in September. Bottom eight, Cards of 7-3.
Mike Crudale gets him. He's got three innings pitch, zero earned runs in September. In the bottom of the ninth, there's Izzy. Back after the sore shoulder, been out a few days. Gets Paul Bacco. Cards win at 8-3. The St. Louis bullpen now, 35 innings pitch, one earned run this month. Astros needing a win against Colorado to stay five and a half back. The Cards, Wade Miller on the hill. 9-0 since June 26, striking out Jay Payton. And then in the second, Miller getting Sandy Alomar Jr. 10 Ks for Wade Miller. Ask Fred Butler about that. Curb looking good. Bottom four, tie ball game. Runners on the corners for Jason Lane. Hot shot, Greg Norton. Nice stop, but he's got no play. Mark Loretta would score. Astros up two to one. Lane would have issues in the field. You'll see what I mean in moments. We have a fly ball coming his way, and Lane is coming on. Lane needs a refund for that facial. Mm. That hurts. He would stay in the game. He's a right fielder. Greg Norton with a fly ball. Lane again. He hustles. Coming hard. Look out for that line. Oh, that right field line can kill you all the time. Ashley just fell. And then his Astro teammates giving Lane a hard time. You see that? The helmet. The catcher's mask. You get it? Clubhouse joke. Lance Berkman switch hitter in Major League history to hit 40 home runs in a season. He has 118 RBIs. He leads the NL in that department, and the Astros keep pace. Many wins. Look at Sammy. He's not hitting, but he's still playing hard. Orlando Cabrera. He's got no shot. Steals second. Same at bat. This guy's flying around the base. He steals third. Barrett strikes out. He'd score in a Javier Vasquez single. Indy Chavez, fair ball in trouble. They were shaded over towards center. Vasquez all the way from first, Sosa Fields. He's going to come around and safe. Good hustle, 2 what? Vasquez, Gonzalez, soup. Well, Javier Vasquez came into the year one of the brightest pitchers in the game. He says he struggled. He hadn't won a game since July 24th. He'd lost seven in a row, but he got it back on track today. Ooh, Jose Vidro got on top of that. It drops. Vasquez scores. Expos got a 3-2 lead. Brad Wilkerson, Will Finane. There's no parking in the visitor spot, baby. Well, Brad Wilkerson's name should come up when talking about rookie of the year. He is. A very, very good hitter. Montreal, the winner, 6-2 over the Cubs. Guerrero had three hits. He's batting 335. Yeah, I think it's between uh, Wilkerson and Jason Jennings out in Colorado. Danny Graves, guess what? He's starting. 0-0 game of the second. He gets touched up by Jason Kindle. That's a base hit leading off. You see this falls Derek Lowe? Yeah, it does. He guys. Craig Wilson. Did they throw him out of the game? That's not Felix Escalona. 6-4-3 double play. Jason Kendall advances to third. Abraham Nunez. You're next, and you're done. Three innings, two hits, couple of strikeouts, nowhere in runs. Russell Brannion, Kip Wells, new ball. 11th of the season for Brannion. Cincinnati's got a 1-0 lead. Is the plan to start Graves next year? Well, that's what they're looking at with Williamson going into the bullpen. Or Joey Hamilton closing. Chris Reitzman walks the pinch hitter. Makoviak to load the bases with one out. Bob Boone. All right, Mr. Sullivan, your turn. Nunez underneath it. Nunez to pop the shallow left. Two Shortstop men down as Lark play. reels it in. Armando Rios pinch hitting for Wells. And you don't want to chase down in the dirt. Reds get out of a jam. Hang on and win it by a score of three zip. Well, not to rip the Pirates too much, but they are last in the National League in run scored, slugging percentage, batting average, and next to last in on base percentage. But to give praise, Adam Dunn. Youngest player ever to have 120 walks. Talk about a guy, the second coming of Jason Giambi. Taking on the Blue Jays. Speaking of guys who can hit, Eric Hinsky, although not here, grounding into a 4 6 3 double play. Top two, Ken Huckabee, Rodriguez, also on the ground. Backs up Fryman, but they still are. Whoa! Can't turn it. Hats off. Couldn't dig it out of the dirt. Two in, Jays up, two zip. Huckabee again, bases loaded. Rodriguez. There's one at third. Long throw. By three DP. Indians get out of that. Good thing it wasn't any. Was no outs because that would have been a triple play. Rodriguez. Wow, they were just chowing turf. Six four three. Indians out again, and it's Wollers to Wells. Oh no. Try to turn through two instead. Stewart scores, and the Jays win it on that. 
error by Wolders. 5-4 the final. Two errors for the Tribe in this game. Speaking of Vernon Wells, this is his 200th game. Well, you take his stats compared to Cameron, Hunter, Bernie Williams, or Andrew Jones through 200 games, no comparison. Vernon Wells, numero uno. 80 losses on the season for Cleveland. The first phenomenal game for him. 27 homers coming into Tuesday. Woo! Sean Lutz, three-run Jimmy Jack smack crackle. 28 twins up three zip. Carlos Payne is on third. Mike Rivera swinging a miss, and the bat is airmailed. Let's skip Kyle Loesch's start. Maybe they thought his innings were getting up there a bit, but he's done a heck of a job, especially when Mays and Radke and Milton were all out with injuries. Loesch, guy that was 3-18 and 18 in New Britain two years ago. Right off of his glove, Chris John Guzman gets the ricochet and throws him out. Good you defense. the whole year in New Britain. You might be 3-18, and 18 too. <laughs> 6.06 ERA, too. Peter, you love the New Britain Rockets. Bobby Higginson facing Loesch. She goes to center. He's thinking double. Not against Tory Hunter. Access denied. That's amazing. He's second in the league in, in assists. Higginson. Same inning. Three batters later. Learn, people. Learn. Don't make the third out at third base, boys. This is the man bites dog inning. Don't Robert Fick leading the league in assists. Torrey cuts down two and one. Tigers don't make the first out or third out in the bases, and they did both in one inning. That's hey. the Tigers. 11 of Minnesota's 15 hits. Went for extra bases. Hunter three run home run. It's a couple of teams running on empty. Bottom three, down three zip. Mike Sweeney, good, good, good hitter. In front of the wall, give him a double. Two runs come in. Royals down a run. 30th of the season for Mike Sweeney. Bottom five, Royals still down a run. Two on, Sweeney again. This is how you win batting titles. Here's a single right through the middle. Tucker scores, tied at three. Tied at four in the seventh, two on for Paul Canerco against Jeremy Hill with two down. Canerco right back. Seeing the hole. Jose Valentin touches home, socks up a run. They're up 8 4, bases loaded. Jeff Leifer, Jeremy Affelt, grand slam. Leifer's fifth home run of the year. White Sox put a 12 spot on the board and win it by eight. Magic number for the Twins, five. White Sox still staying mathematically alive, but the days are dwindling down to a precious few. They uh, anticipate Canerco being a 100 RBI guy for years to come. He reached his He's a taking on the Braves, who have uh, clinched the National League East, and boy, Mike Piazza's locked in all of a sudden. That's a huge home run. Comes off Damian Moss, a two-run shot. It's 28th of the season, it's five zip. Pedro Estacio, you don't want to go there. Andrew Jones, so Monday night you talked about Jones going to right field. Yeah, when he goes to right field, he's an absolutely brilliant hitter. He does it a couple of times during the season. He gets locked in for about two weeks at a time. Leading off here in the fourth. Remember, Andrew hit two home runs in the game that he was then hit in the face. He took the day off, then the team took a day off, so he actually had homered in four at bats. Mark DeRosa. There's yard. someone who's going to be very important in the postseason, playing second or third. Braves down a run. Henry Blanco changes that. Another solo act. It's 6-6. Blanco, sixth home run of the season. Same score, bottom five. Look out. Estacio to the ribcage of Sheffield. He gets tossed, gets stared down. Piazza sort of moves out to interfere with what would be any Attacked by Sheffield, Tony Randazzo said enough's enough, and then Andrew comes up, doesn't homer, but he does deliver Franco and Sheffield. Atlanta went up 8-6, and they go on and win by a final of 12-6. Mets. I think the, the Braves, Braves just wanted to see, have the Mets see them celebrate. Toy with them a little bit, yeah. Andrew, 12th different player in the history of the league to homer in four straight at bats. He homered in his last two, remember, it was on Saturday. Ray Hodges earns a win in relief in his Major League debut for Atlanta. He starts with Pat the Bat ripping the ball down the line and fair, and that's got trouble written all over it. Bobby Abreu, Voop waves him. Louis Castillo, Kevin Millar's cutoff, and hey, Abreu is done at home. Vukovic, he had enough. It's not Boa getting tossed, it's Vukovic, Peter. Uh, no, but Louis Castillo coming over. To back up the relay. Ends up with the ball. Great throw. 
Tough call to see the plate there, but in any event, it was heads up play by Castillo, ranging all the way over there to serve as the backup. Castillo. Meantime, Randy Wolf to Mike Redmond, not returning. First loss for Randy since July 21st. We were saying Randy Wolf's pitching like Tom Glavin. That's why Mike Redmond hit the home run off. Exactly. There you go. <laughs> Justin Wayne, six in the third, two hits, no runs. I should say that's the second game. Jumping ahead, 6-4, the Marlins over the Phillies in this one. How about showing you that Justin Wayne performance in game two? Vicente Padilla started and didn't pitch very well. Pablo Ozuna's at first, and Fox right back up the middle. Ozuna gets hit on the arm while it's running to second, so he is ruled out. Soup, explain. Well, if runner gets hit by the ball, he's automatically out. The batter thanks him, though, because he gets credit for a base hit. So, good call by the umpire. Got it right. All right, Justin Wayne pitching. Pat Burrell. Mike Lowell. This is good. Oh, boy, what a play by Mike Lowell. Wow. That is the duplicate of Matt Williams from Monday night. Wayne Polanco. Uh-oh. Gosh. What a grab by They want to look at Wayne. He's... That was former number one pick of the Marlins that, from Stanford that they got in the Clifford Floyd game. That's fair, Millar, and that's going to go so off the wall. He's going to try to stretch for a double and keep your head up on that and watch. And oh goodness, <laughs> he just didn't get there. Kevin, Kevin, Ouch. Kevin. We have slide the first day here. Right. On Gloss hurt his hand Monday night for the Angels. Millar, thankfully, didn't hurt anything. And again, Wayne, six in the third, no runs. Toughest thing about this day for the ESPN production staff, Phillies lose two, Orioles lose two. Our producers 0 for 